Hey guys, what's going on? Greenville Gear. Thanks uh, as always for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm back. Sort of a quickish video. We'll see. Um, but I've got here 25 cards that I'm adding to my 1960 top set. Uh, I'll be putting them in the binder after this video. Uh, a couple Hall of Famers in here. Uh, and uh, it's just been a blast doing this um, set build. I'm just having a lot of fun doing it. And it sort of takes me back to kind of what collecting is all about. And someday, someday, I'll just have the 1960 top set, uh, which is going to be really neat. So um, I don't really have a timeline or anything like that, but it's just a fun project to work on. So um, let me show you some of the cards that I picked up. And I've gotten a few of these from various kind of lots online, some cards from Greg Morris and elsewhere. Um, there's Dick Williams, Hall of Famer. And so that's a kind of perfect in my mind binder card. That's not a card that I need necessarily graded. I'm trying to get all the Hall of Fame cards um, graded and so on. Jim Pearsall. My big thing is with the 1960 set is I try to really get them decently centered and just good eye appeal. It's okay if they kind of look like a vintage card, which is one of my rules of thumb kind of anyway. Uh, here's Jack Sanford. I love this set. And one of these days, I'm going to be more dutiful about going through and reading all the cartoons and all that stuff. Here's Don Larson. It's got a little ink mark there, but... This was part of a lot I got online. Don Larson um, famously, of course, threw that perfect game in the World Series for the Yankees. Um, and had an overall losing record as a pitcher, but just had that incredible game and moment. And uh, I was watching that Yogi Berra documentary, and they talked a lot about how really it was Berra who helped Larson in that game and, and you know, calling the game and all that stuff. It's interesting. Uh, here's Johnny Padres from the Dodgers. He's on a couple of those combo cards with uh, the Hall of Famers on those Dodgers staff. Um, I don't have any of these kind of World Series highlights cards yet for the set, so this one's my first one. The 1959 World Series. Carl Ferrillo in Game 3. 92,000 people at that game. Here's Vic Power. Roy Sievers. Here's another Hall of Fame card. Hall of Famer, Hoyt Wilhelm here with Roy Face on the Fork and Knuckler card. I didn't have any of these combo cards from the set either. Pretty neat. And then I've got a bunch, and actually these are all in Greg Morris holders, but I don't think they're all Greg Morris cards per se. Greg Morris just puts them in the card saver one, but I have a lot of fun kind of just putting in bids on those auctions and seeing how many cards I can get. Not just for 1960 tops, but I, and I'll do a separate video for this, but I'm kind of adding 1950 Bowman to my pickup list. I really like that set as well. Here's Don Newcomb, who is not a Hall of Famer, but um, I did a little digging because I was thinking about him, the, the I don't know, probably a few months ago. Not randomly, I wasn't sitting around thinking about Don Newcomb, but I was looking at his cards, and he's got a case to be made for the Hall of Fame, but not in at this moment. Bob Skinner, this card's got some wear, but this, to me, is a perfect card to go in a binder, you know. Worn corner here, fisheye here. Nevertheless, that'll look great in the binder. Here's Harry Bright, that's a nice copy. Card 277. And most of my cards that I've acquired in the set, here's Rip Coleman from the O's, are kind of obviously the lower numbers 
into the 300s. Um, and I think the real challenge will be really building out the set in the high numbers, some of the rarer cards. So here's Bobby Locke, card number 44. Not a challenge to get that necessarily. Hobie Landreth. Card 42. So if you're a card collector like me, um, you like this exercise and you like seeing these, I hope. I have fun showing them. Russ Snyder. Russ, see, low-key, you know, I'd never heard of a Russ Snyder. But there on the cartoon, Russ had the sixth highest batting average in the American League last year. It's pretty good. Just casually hit 313 in 1959. Here's Gordon Jones. A little bit of a pushed corner on that one, but... As I said before, will look perfect in my binder. Here's Eddie Yost. Third baseman for the Tigers. And there's the Iron Man Yost cartoon because he played in 829 straight games. Here's Billy Pierce. This one's got a little wear too. It seems like a little scratching there. Fish eye. Pushed corner. Might be a card for an upgrade someday. Similarly, here's Del Rice, which actually looks really good back here. But it's got some staining here, and there's, I don't know if you can see it on the, but there's a little bend crease right here. But for now, happy to have Del Rice and Billy Pierce in my set. Here's a pretty sharp one, Bob Hale. Just a couple more here. Here's Ike Delock, Delock from the Sox. Best ERA of all the Red Sox starters. And the last card that I'll be putting in my binder today is J.C. Martin uh, of the White Sox, card number 346. And J.C. is also a carpenter in the offseason. So there they are. I think it's 25 cards um, going in the binder. Every time I have a little stack like this, a, a, a fat stack, if you will, shout out to Cheese Mikey, you know, building the set by another 4 or 5% uh, and just having a real ball doing it. So thanks, as always, for tuning in, watching the videos. Uh, if you're interested in this 1960s set build, you can go back in my other videos. You'll find some more. Uh, give those a, a like and so on so other collectors might uh, check it out if they're working on the set. Um, and... Uh, enjoy it as well. So take care. I'll see you on the next video.